With more communities engaged in prevention, we can have more people making healthy choices. Prevention First, guiding communities to a vibrant future. To get involved, go to prevention-first.org. Substance abuse and prevention and wellness to me means a good life. If you are involved in alcohol or other drugs, um, your chances of a successful, happy life are very slim. The only place I think it starts is, is local communities, and I think that's what's great about Prevention First. It's a local, um, a, a local coalition. It's a, based on local coalitions. It's trying to teach those in the neighborhoods about their specific needs and issues. Um, parents, teachers, um, everyone in the community, coaches, you name it, everybody needs to be involved to, to help others or help our young, younger generation realize that they're going to be better off not doing drugs. The reason why prevention is so important to me and in my community is that pretty much I don't want, every, I don't want anybody to be stuck in any situation or even think about engaging in those behaviors so their life won't turn out worse or well not worse but in a bad way and I want everybody to have a life that they deserve since everybody's cool. <laughs> Uh, I think it's really important that we continue to focus on how to help people make the right decisions so that they can indeed lead, lead a full life, uh, be able to take care of their families, be able to have the dignity and self-respect that comes from work. Um, all of this is so important and that's why I think prevention, wellness, education is so important. It's good when parents have prevention messages in the home. It's better when those, when the school, that those children then leave the home and go to school, that they have those same prevention messages and strategies implemented in school. But it's really best when those prevention messages are mirrored and consistent from home to school to the workplace and the community. Prevention First plays a number of roles in our community. They run the biennial survey of student drug usage which helps drive the strategies and, and focus for the organization and the rest of the community. They also focus on coalition building and that messaging that of um, reaching maximum potential that can be delivered by so many people that surround and influence youth. For me, substance abuse prevention is about working with communities to understand that uh, there's more to substance use than treatment. Uh, we hear a lot of times about the heroin epidemic and the issues going on around heroin and that we need treatment. But what I think a lot of communities don't understand is that there are things we can do on the front end to prevent people from needing treatment on the back end. So to me, substance abuse prevention is about doing things in communities that help them to build a structure that keeps uh, youth and adults from using substances. With a prevention background, as in um, their parents have talked to them, they're getting messages through school, they have a community that, um, that monitors um, drugs that are available and, and keeps things under wrap um, and fix, you know, adjust the policies for that. I think that what we end up with is kids, that's their lifestyle. They, they live a prevention lifestyle so that you know, they, 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 they're thinking every day because they'll come across it every day about, okay, well, what do I do in this case? Or how am I gonna, what's my choice here? So they choose to be healthy. They choose to watch uh, how they're using substances. And then they raise their kids the same way. And then they um, uh, build their community the same way around a healthy, thriving community. Thank you. Thank you for being a prevention champion. Thank you. Prevention champion. Thank you for being a prevention champion. Be a prevention champion. Thank you, prevention first.
13.1 THC level, 0.08 blood alcohol level, same results. Drug driving is dangerous driving. Prevention First, guiding communities to a vibrant future. Learn more at prevention-first.org. Don't let gambling take control. Set a limit, exercise control, and remember it's a form of entertainment. Prevention First, guiding communities to a vibrant future. To get involved, go to prevention-first.org. Whoa, lemonade, big drinker there, Daryl. Hey, our kids look up to us, so we don't drink in front of them. Going soft on us, Daryl? I think it's a great idea. We are drinking too much in front of the kids. It's not like I'm giving them alcohol or anything. Well, you know, anything that we can do to help our kids make the right decisions is important to us. Is the lemonade ready? Strong voices, smart choices. For more information, go to drugfreecincinnati.org. See you tomorrow. Love you too. Here we go. Nah, man, it's no way. All the girls cannot hey. believe that they're going. <laughs> no. <laughs> Y-L-Y-C. Mm -hmm. Y-L-Y-C? Your life, your choice. For more information, go to drugfreecincinnati.org. Fatherhood Project is designed to help men be better dads. The annual Fatherhood Celebration Luncheon is designed to support the services and advocate for the importance of fathers in our families and community. Fathers and grandfathers come to Talbert House through word of mouth from successful graduates, by referral from community organizations, and at the suggestion of other systems of care, including schools, courts, and job and family services. There are many components to the program that make it effective. Three of the most impactful are the strong support system that is developed between the staff, alumni, classmates, and volunteers who serve as mentors to share experiences and perspectives. Nurturing fathers classes that give dads the opportunity to improve their communication skills and understand children's needs at different stages of development. The 10-week class provides skill-based learning on parenting topics that include child development, discipline, and budgeting. Access to legal assistance and vocational services that stabilize the family financially. Some men have had great role models and have the basics they need to be good dads, but not every dad has that foundation. Regardless, all dads can learn to be better dads. While there might not be one set of rules that work for all dads and their kids, there are definitely skills and traits that help men be better dads. Always keeping their child's best interest at heart, the Fatherhood Project combines positive role models, mentors, and a support system with proven information and skills dads need to be successful. When possible, the child's mother is included in the program to help improve communication. Based in Hamilton County, the program serves over 250 dads per year and this year will be expanding to Butler and Warren counties. Through your sponsorship, Talbert House is able to provide these services at no cost to the father. Last year alone, we had over 600 attendees at the event. Over the past nine years, the Fatherhood Celebration Luncheon has raised over $1.1 million to support these services. These services are also funded in part by the Ohio Commission on Fatherhood and United Way of Greater Cincinnati. At the luncheon, we honor past graduates as well as community leaders who have raised amazing children also serving our community. Among the past community leaders honored, Ray Brokamp, Bob Castellini, Dick Farmer, Jack Gilligan, Nathaniel Jones, Don Kleekamp, Buddy LaRosa, William Mallory Sr., 
and Robert Stoutberg. As a result of the Fatherhood Project, dads are equipped to meet the emotional and financial needs of their children, be positive role models for them, thereby breaking the cycle of absent and emotionally uninvolved parents for generations to come. The Fatherhood Project creates better parents for the future, our future. To the Fatherhood Project, thank you very much for helping me be, become the best dad that I can be. Oh, you're doing a great job so far. <laughs> so far, okay, thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're very welcome. What I truly think about you is that I don't think I could have gotten any luckier in this world. And now, one of the true highlights of our fatherhood lunch is always recognizing our program Father of the Year. Ivor Hampton is an incredible dad who advocates for his kids, who knows and recognizes that being a father is a lifelong journey and a lifelong education. Ivor is a graduate of the Fatherhood Project from 2015. He followed in the footsteps of his brother, who was also one of our graduates. Ivor is a perfect illustration of success in our Fatherhood Project, now mentoring other fathers in the project as a true involved alum. We're honored to recognize him as our Father of the Year. Uh, I believe Ivor is a great candidate for Father of the Year because of his willingness to be a good dad. Uh, he wanted to take the uh, Nurturing Fathers group uh, the parenting class, and his determination to be a better father and fight for what he really believed was right. That, in a nutshell, is what makes him Father of the Year. What makes my dad a good dad is he's there. He's there when I need him, even though I'm still, I'm not at home and I'm not on my own. So we've developed a, a relationship, like a bond that can't be broken. He's a person that I would never let go, even if it was just me by myself in this world today. He's, he's my right hand. Uh, like his brother, Ivor, as a participating in the alumni aspect of the Fatherhood Project, um, he's there constantly. He's there for graduations. He's there for outings. He's there for Tuesday night groups. I mean, he's just there uh, volunteering his time, trying to be a mentor, uh, to the guys who are going through the project now. Ivor is a, he, he's a great addition to the fatherhood project and we love him. In the last two years, I've noticed that my dad listens more. He talks through the situation and instead of him trying to solve it himself or figure out solutions that's not right, he talks about it and actually makes you think more of the situation and how you could have did it differently one word that I could describe my dad is awesome. Yes. Awesome. Ivor, I want to congratulate you on being the father of the year. Great job. Uh, you are an inspiration to your children, a great role model, as well as inspiration to the Fatherhood Project and their clients now. Uh, I highly encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. You are father of the year. Great job. Daddy, congratulations. We love you, we're proud of you, and keep up the good work. Hi, I'm John Silverman, and I'd like to welcome you once again to the Fatherhood Lunch. It's great to have you with us here today. Our Fatherhood Project has continued to grow throughout the community and serve more and more people in our community thanks to your great support. We very much appreciate it. One of the great things that our committee enjoys every year is selecting our Fathers of the Year. This year our committee recognized and affirmed that the importance of being a dad may not mean that you're a biological father. It may mean that you are a father figure to literally hundreds of kids. Coach Mike Price has been that person a relentless advocate and supporter and mentor for kids throughout our community for literally decades. We are very pleased and honored to recognize Coach Mike Price as our Father of the Year. Well, Mike has always been a father-like figure to his team and his players, and he's always taken good care of them. 
And in addition to that, we have people coming up to us all the time from other schools, like our competitor, Elder, people that he's helped through AAU, and people that he has placed in college scholarships. And as parents, we're very proud of that. He's honored us greatly by that. There's hundreds of kids, you know, that will tell you the same thing I'm telling you right now, is, is how much he cares about his players. But the, the life lessons that he's taught me, that he's taught so many kids that he's coached, um, just to be better people, good parents, good dads. You know he cares for you and would do anything for you. I could call him from California and tell him I need him, and he'd be there. You know, fathers have to give people advice, and my brother Mike, being a coach and a high school teacher, he catches people really at sort of the roughest part of their life when they're trying to figure out who they're going to be. Maybe their families are going through difficult times, and he's always been there for them, and that's what really fathers tend to do for their children. A lot of fathers are really busy, uh, but they give advice, and they try and steer their children in the right direction, try and give them the age-old wisdom that they've learned from people and other people, and he's been very unselfish with that. I learned from him uh, that uh, he cared more than just about basketball. He cared about the kids' grades. He was very important that the kids got good grades, um, helped them get uh, jobs during the summer. It was just more than just basketball. He just cared about what they were doing in their daily lives. Hey, Coach. First off, I just want to say congratulations on your award. It's very well-deserved. Um, I'd really just like to thank you for everything you've done for me. I mean, without you, I'm, I'm not 100% sure where I would be in life. You've done so much for me. You've done a lot for my family, actually. You know, so I'll run into people in airports all throughout the country who have interacted with Mike, met him, seen him coach. And, you know, I get compliments about Mike all the time, uh, about how great a person he is and the things that he's done for his players, the things he does for other people. And so I've just had, you know, an overwhelming sense of pride when I was 12 years old, my father and my best friend passed away after a five-year battle with cancer. I was extremely angry at the time, confused. I didn't understand why this was happening. I started to make some poor choices in life, wasn't hanging out with the right group of guys, and very easily could have taken the wrong path in life. Luckily, Coach Price entered my world. I don't think I would have even attended college if it wasn't for Coach Price's guidance and support. I wasn't a good student. I was a horrible student in high school. I graduated with a two point something in GPA. But Coach saw a lot more in me. He pushed me to be better, to believe in myself, to work hard. I ended up graduating in four years with honors while playing basketball and having the fortune to coach at Oak Hills with Coach Price. Mike, we're proud of we're proud of you. We're you're very considerate of us as parents. You've honored us, and we're very happy as, having you as our son. He knows I love him very much. <laughs> we have a good time together. Just want to say I, I love you and thank you for all that you've done for me in uh, helping me coach and uh, become a better person and a better coach. Mike, I'm really proud of you and all the stuff you've done for the community. Uh, you are a great example, one of many in our family, but you have done remarkable works for everybody. Um, thanks and keep up the good work from us. Hello, brother Mike. Uh, I'm very, very, very proud of you. As I said many times, uh, you're somebody that should be admired and looked up to, and I love you very much and I'm very proud of you. Coach Price, congratulations. Uh, this is obviously well-deserved. Um, you know, you've impacted my life in so many ways that you will never know. Um, I look forward to celebrating at Skyline, and, and please don't yell at me for not shaving for this. Thank you for everything, Coach. I mean, you're one of the most special people in my life, and I, I really cherish every conversation we have. Coach, I want to thank you for everything you've done for me. The hours in the gym, all the dinners, and the countless other things that you've given me and done for me. But most importantly, I want to thank you for the role model that you showed me. I have five beautiful children today, and I hope that I can be half the father to them that you've been to me. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations on your award. I am 
Kira Reitzman, Administrative Specialist for SSVF, Supportive Services for Veterans and Families at Talbert House. The best part about working for Talbert House is the clients. I care about the things that we do. I've been in many of their positions and I like to see their successes, help them through their difficulties. Success for me looks like I'm kind of sad when it's Friday. I don't want to go home. <laughs> I love my family, but I really enjoy getting up and coming to work every day. And I don't think you could ask for anything more than that. A lot of our clients come in and they haven't had a house in a long time. They haven't worked in a very long time. And they've lost the confidence or belief that they could even get a job. So helping them through an application or a resume or they may have a medical issue and letting them know I can do a SOAR application and expedited social security and they're finally getting that income again and that confidence that they can be self-sufficient. I wanted to work at Talbert House because it seems like they've always been in my life in some, some aspect. Um, I have been a Talbert House client. They have helped me through different areas in my life. Um, my children have been Talbert House clients. Almost everyone I've ever met has had some dealings with Talbert House in some way, shape, or fashion at some point in their life. I am happy to be a Talbert House team member because I have also been a Talbert House client. So our clients are me, I am them. I understand many of their challenges and being a part of that team Nothing could give me more pride than to be a part of it. The Hamilton County Summer Youth Employment Program is an opportunity for us to provide youth between the ages of 14 and 24 an opportunity to have a variety of experiences in different work sites and locations throughout Greater Cincinnati. I am a job coach and my job is to assist our youth in job placement, uh, training on the job, interviewing skills, setting goals. The Summer Youth Employment Program is important to our community because we have the opportunity to groom youth to prepare them to come to the work field. Throughout Hamilton County, there were various work sites. They included restaurants, retail, child care, child development, as well as office and clerical professional settings. What I really didn't expect from the Summer Youth Employment Program was the fact that it offered so much. Businesses like accounting firms and office jobs. I really applied thinking that, you know, it was just going to help me get a job at, you know, a corner store. But it helped me do so much more than that. And also it helped me to value who I am and not just apply for the lowest job, but apply for what I believe that I can do. So the thing about the Summer Youth Employment Program that specifically caught our eye and made us want to be involved was the fact that it not only supported youth in the community and gave them a job site where they could learn uh, job skills or you know something that can really benefit them in the future, but for us who you know, we're a nonprofit and we're very new. We don't have the capacity to be able to employ a student. You see them come in and they're raw, you know, in their dress, in their communication skills, in their demeanor. But once they go through the program, when they go through the training, they're going through the goal settings and how to interview, how to communicate, uh, how to dress, uh, how to um, research where they want to go. I've seen some kids, when they come back to the job fairs, you see they're dressed differently. They look more professional. They uh, have a better view of how they would pick out clothing, what to wear, how to talk. They understand the importance of having boundaries between their personal life and their professional life. I would encourage other employers to really benefit from the Summer Youth Employment Program. Um, it's a way to not only help out the youth in your community, but you have nothing to lose. I mean, you gain help, you gain uh, the ability to kind of nurture a young person along. Our experience was wonderful. They really helped me to understand that my appearance matters. And when within the first seven seconds of somebody meeting you, that's your first impression. And you want it to be good, not just, oh, who is that? But, oh, who is that? I like them. I want them to work with me. I want them to be connected to me. And it'll really help you get connected with great people.
Hi, I'm U.S. Senator Rob Portman. I really wish I could be with you today with my good friend Mary Haig for release of the newest edition of Strong Voices, Smart Choices. I remember when we put the first edition out and how hard we worked on it, but this one's even better because it's going to help even more parents be able to talk to their kids about the dangers of drug abuse and do it in a more effective way. I'm so proud of the work that Prevention First has done. Uh, we've been in business now for more than 20 years. I'm proud to be the founder of what was called the Coalition for a Drug-Free Greater Cincinnati, the precursor to Prevention First. You know, when we started, we were so concerned about the use of cocaine. Uh, we were concerned about the growing use of marijuana among our kids. Uh, opioids was frankly uh, not a big issue back then. 20 years later, we're in the grip of the worst drug crisis in the history of our country by any measure. More Americans are dying of drug overdoses now than ever before. Drug overdoses now kill more Americans than car accidents, as, as you know. Uh, and our streets are now being flooded with a new drug. It's a synthetic form of heroin called fentanyl or carfentanyl or U4. With regard to fentanyl, exposure to just two milligrams of this synthetic drug, roughly equivalent to a pinch of salt, can be fatal. So it's more important than ever that we have this conversation with our kids about the dangers of trying drugs. To all the parents out there, as a dad, I know that sometimes it can feel like your kids aren't listening, but they are. They hear you. All of the evidence shows that. Talking to your kids about drug use isn't easy, but it's absolutely essential if we're going to be able to turn the tide on this epidemic. And there is lots of evidence for that. Studies have shown that kids are 50 percent less likely to use drugs if their parents talk to them about it. And if you ask your kids to stay away from drugs, more than half will tell you it's because their parents talk to them about it. That's what kids say. It's critically important that they learn the dangers of experimenting with drugs. Right now, with the new drugs out in the streets, one mistake can change a life forever. But so can one smart choice. So can one conversation. With our strong voices speaking out for prevention, we're going to help our kids make smart choices so that they can live out their dreams. That's ultimately how we're going to do this, how we're going to beat this, how we're going to turn it around in our communities, in our families, and in our hearts. So again. Thanks so much for supporting Prevention First. Uh, we need Prevention First now more than ever. And thanks again for the good work that Mary and others are doing to ensure that every parent has the tools to be able to talk to their kids. It's so important. Godspeed to you in your important work.